As the calls for change in the Breonna Taylor case grow louder, the sole police officer facing charges for the raid that killed Taylor is expected to plead not guilty in court today. Brett Hankison was fired from the department back in June and charged last week with first degree wanton endangerment. Many felt the charges against Hankison didn't go far enough and sparked nationwide protests. Attorneys for Breonna Taylor's family are calling for the release of the grand jury transcripts. Taylor was killed inside her own apartment back in March. And tonight, newly released body camera shows what appears to be the immediate aftermath of the police raid that killed Taylor. The video obtained by Vice News seems to show a possible violation of police policy after the shooting. CBS News correspondent Adriana Diaz reports a former detective who faces criminal charges in this case seems to be in the video. Over the weekend, never before seen body camera footage obtained and released by Vice News appears to show former detective Brett Hankison, who was involved in the raid that killed Breonna Taylor, walking into the crime scene after the incident. According to Vice, that's him with the flashlight asking about shell casing. That's theirs? No, that's ours, it looks like. Well, I'd, I'd back out until they get PIU in here. CBS News has not been able to verify the video. If Hankinson was indeed at the scene after the shooting, that would be a violation of police policy, which states officers involved in shootings are to be isolated from all non-essential individuals for the remainder of the initial investigation. That is just tremendously shocking. Angelo Pinto is an activist with the group Until Freedom that works with Taylor's family. He says the video is troubling. It looks like, and I think it's clear in some instances, that a lot of departmental policies were being violated. But an attorney for the officer who was shot says these body camera videos don't show anything substantial. He says the officer still acted in legal self-defense. This state document raises additional questions. A portion of the Kentucky State Police Ballistics Report obtained by CBS News appears to not support State Attorney General Daniel Cameron's assertion that Taylor's boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, definitively shot Sergeant Jonathan Mattingly the night Taylor was killed. In part, it reads the bullet that hit Mattingly was neither identified nor eliminated as having been fired from Walker's gun. Walker's attorney, Steve Romine, says he has seen the full report. Uh, there's also evidence that Kenny shot actually hit the carpet uh, in the uh, apartment. Walker was charged with attempted murder of a police officer, but the case was dropped without prejudice. Walker's co-counsel Frederick Moore says this means the state could charge him again if they see fit. They can't really prove what Kenny knew when he fired the shot, right? Which is the element essentially for attempted murder. It's not clear if the ballistics report or the body camera footage were presented to the grand jury, which decided Wednesday not to charge anyone with Taylor's death. Attorneys for Taylor's boyfriend have filed a motion for all the evidence presented to them to be released. An attorney for Brett Hankison said he's never seen a ballistics report, adding, quote, unlike a lot of lawyers, I do not try my cases in the press. I try them based on evidence in the courtroom. The police department's internal review is ongoing. Adriana Diaz, CBS News, Louisville.